Welcome to the 2023 final results presentation from Oliver Hassler, CEO and Chairman at Pix Resources. Oliver will talk us through the investor presentation. And here's the man himself. Over to you, Oliver. Thank you very much. Good morning or afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. I'm very pleased to welcome you today to this Pix Resources investor call for our results ending on December 31st, 2023. During the presentation today, I'll give you an overview of the key highlights of the uh, year together with a summary of where we stand on our strategy. I will assume everybody has read the disclaimer on page two of this presentation. 2023 has been a hugely successful year for PIX in which we have delivered strong volume growth and operational performance on the back of solid business fundamentals. We finished the year on a very powerful note with a healthy bank balance, a positive underlying EBITDA, global investor support, strong demand for our growing product suite, and most important, a safe workplace record. We are particularly pleased that we have continued to grow our premium zircon production numbers and have been successful in adding the highly thought after commodities of rutile and ilmenite to our product portfolio. A pivotal accomplishment this year lies in our strategic decision to enhance trade dynamics by actively expanding our customer base in the Asian markets, in particular China and India. We're very proud of our safety and environmental record, and sustainability remains a major focus of our operations. We look forward to delivering further strong growth in 2024, and we want to thank our highly valued shareholders, workers, and operating communities for their ongoing support. Going over to page three, as most of you already know, Pix Resources is a mineral sands mining company with very large resources. Pix is the third largest producing mineral sands company based on Zircon Resources. We're listed in Australia since February 2020 and on the main board of the London Stock Exchange since November 2021. We are in production and we have been producing premium zircon since 2025. Sorry, since 2015, I'm getting ahead of myself. Not only do we have a very large resource, we also are known for a superior quality. On one side, we have a very high assemblage value. This is the result of our high concentration of zircon. Most of the mineral sands mining companies are ilmenite uh, miners with byproducts of rutile and zircon. We're a zircon mining company with byproduct of ilmenite, which is very interesting because zircon is the most expensive from these minerals. And the end result of this gives us a three to five times higher assemblage value than the one of our peers. Our Kalimantan sand is also sought uh, after because of its high quality. Kalimantan zircon sands have a low radioactivity, low alunima content, and very high whiteness. This makes them ideal for fused zirconia, which leads to high-tech applications such as limb semiconductors, batteries for electric vehicles, solar cells, etc. Our project is a low capex project since there's no major uh, investments to do on the logistics side. We have our offices in Palankaraya, which was one of the prospect cities to become the new capital city of Indonesia, and as a result of that, we have an international airport. Uh, the entire road to our mineral separation plant and mine is a government paved road. Uh, we have two high volume ports, Panjamasin and Sampit, which are used to export iron ore, oil, coal, iron ore, coal, and, and palm oil. So we don't have to invest in these major capex lines, which other projects have to. Timing for a project could not be better. There is not enough supply for the growing demand, surely not looking into the future. Uh, there's trade tensions between Australia and China, China being the biggest consumer, Australia being the biggest supplier. So Chinese like buying in Indonesia, which is the largest Belt and Road country, and with that a strategic ally of that country. Very important also, most of the major developed governments have added zircon, ilmenite, and rutile to the list of the critical minerals required for the transition into carbon zero. 
We also made sure from the beginning that we operate under international uh, standards and have built a very solid platform uh, for our project. On page four, you will see the main financial results of 2023. You can see that 24% year-on-year increase in Zircon sales volume to 11,350 tons and a 20% increase in total sales. This gave us a strong revenue of 20, almost $23 million, which is constant to last year despite of the soft markets. Our underlying EBITDA of almost $700,000 represents a 61% increase. This is in particular important uh, since we're only in the third year uh, of operation. And as mentioned in other occasions, the first two years were COVID years, so we had no access to the country. We showed an 8% year-on-year increase in our net cash position with $7.8 million. We remain debt-free. We also had a year-on-year uh, increase of our inventory of 22% at 17 days. We only have enough inventory to prepare for the next shipment. So we have always managed to sell everything we have produced. We also showed a decrease of personnel of 22%, reflecting an increase in efficiency. Going to page two, you will see that during the 12 months uh, last year, finishing in December 2023, the company made significant headwinds in establishing itself as a leading player in the premium zircon market. Since its listing in February 2020, the, comp- the company has focused on delivering its strategy and creating shareholder value. The company performed strongly in 2023, mainly to a boost in premium zircon production and sales. Consequently, the full year shows a revenue of $22,700,000 remaining flat compared to 2022. We achieved a positive underlying EBITDA with an increase of net cash to almost $8 million and remaining debt-free, like I mentioned before. All this despite an average price decrease of PIX premium zircon of 19%. Furthermore, PIX produced 14.8 thousand tons of mineral sand, so zircon, rutile, and ilmenite, in total, of which 11.8 thousand were premium zircon, representing a decrease of 11% and an increase of 31% year on year, uh, respectively. Year-on-year sales of premium zircon grew by 24% to 11,400 tons. No sales of titanium stock fees were made while the company awaited the modification of the Rutile and Ilmenite export license, which we obtained and announced on the 12th of March. So now the way is free to start exporting Ilmenite. The company also strengthened its finished goods inventory to 10,900 tons. Last year it was 7,300, mainly as a result of the increase of Rutal and Ilmenite production. Premium Zircon inventories increased by 533 tons to 17 days uh, from the 438,000 tons in 2022. Our net loss after tax for the period was just over $10 million. This is mainly due to non-cash expenses, expenses incurred in fair value change of the financial instruments of about $1.7 million, the cancellation of just over 20 million performance rights, convertible into a maximum of 23,500 shares. On page six, you will see our cash flow analysis, which by the end of December 2023 shows that PICs remain debt-free. The company cash and cash equivalent balance at the end of 2023 was almost 8 million, up from 7.2 million in the previous year. This is a result of the increase of operating working capital of 1.9 million needed to increase our production uh, volumes, 2.5 million investment in CapEx and a positive 5.1 million of financial activities mainly showing the strong support of our shareholders. 
on page 7, you will see our mineral, uh, our mineral sands uh, operations. Uh, as I mentioned before, logistically we are ideal, so we have a, lo a low capex as uh, the project. On page eight, you will see for those of you that are not familiar with uh, Zircon, Zircon has different end markets. The traditional uses are for the manufacturing of ceramics, but there's also more and more growing high tech applications where Zircon is becoming popular in the manufacturing of semiconductors, implants, solar cells, fuel cells, batteries, etc. And also there's some intermediate use, such as uh, through the production of fused zirconia, where zircon is used for nuclear fuel rods, paper, brake pads, etc. As the world accelerates towards decarbonization and net zero emissions, Various technologies are becoming critical components of industrial policies worldwide, including solar cells, nuclear energy, catalysis, etc. Given many of these technologies utilize zircon, and we expect as a result of it the demand to increase. Looking at the forecasts of TZ Mineral International, better known as TZMI, they estimate the markets will return with a CAGR growth of 2.5%, which is the reason we remain very bullish looking into the zircon market going forward. Accordingly, the global zircon market is projected to register a CAGR of over 3 to 5% in terms of volume from 2022 to 2027, which will put a lot of pressure on prices increasing. As a result of this, zircon prices have shown an increased trend year on year for the past 15 years. Slide 9 uh, shows you the applications mainly for titanium uh, oxide, so ilmenite and rutile. 90% of the ilmenite is used for pigmentation to make products white. The rest is used for welding rods. And then a small part is used to produce titanium for the aircraft industry. On page 10, you will see our customer base. Our existing customer base consists of global blue chip customers operating in various industries and sectors in different geographies. Through the strategy of market diversification, we have been able to mitigate the strong reduction of demand coming from the Western economies. During 2023, most of Pix's sales focused on India and China with an increase of 126% of our sales into India. During the period, Pix grew its customer base by 23%. Zircon utilizers from around the world have been very keen in approving Pix Premium Zircon as they seek to secure future supply and look for new competitive options. All sales during the period remain to be in U.S. dollars, reducing the risk of exchange rate. But there's also other milestones that we reached that are not financial. On page 11, you will see that over the past year, we have been making significant efforts to develop a sustainable program. To this end, the company launched from the beginning our PIX Cares program, which is inspired by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and categorized for five core elements that encompass the planet, people, prosperity, peace, and partnership, while also serving the local communities. Uh, last year, we continued to put the message of sustainability at the heart of our operations in Indonesia. Uh, having we joined the UN Global Compact Initiatives to align our strategies with universal principles, focusing on the preservation of the environment and benefiting the local uh, communities for generations to come. We have been involved in several programs. On one side, for the fourth year, we have participated with the Indonesian Red Cross Initiative. We have also built a cultural learning house for children 
which is an initiative that aims to enhance the learning environment for the school children at the school, which is located be, be, uh, just next to the Mandiri tenement. We also had a traditional dance initiative with the purpose of teaching dance, traditional dances to young girls aged 8 to 12 year old. We also had a project which we called the Healthy Children Project, where Pigs Cares organized and funded an extensive health care examination for every student in the local elementary school. Not to forget that in addition to our access, uh, actions, zircon, rutal, and ilmenite are recognized as critical minerals required towards the transition to zero emissions. On the last slide, 2012, what do we expect going forward? As of as 2023, we continue to focus on increasing our production volumes. We also expect to find a drastic reduction in cost. We have big cost opportunities. One with the first one, the obvious one, as we grow the volumes, we get economies of scale. We're also migrating from third party miners to our own in house mining which is, uh, represents a huge opportunity of drastic cost reduction. We're also in the process of connecting to the electrical grid. We have the sales of Rutal and Ilmenite, which we have been stockpiling. It represent a huge uh, sales opportunity. Strategically, we continue to constantly looking for opportunities to, uh, to find new assets to increase. As I've mentioned before, we see ourselves in the future as becoming the consolidator of the mineral sands industry in Kalimantan. Our five-year plan calls for 48,000 tons. And for those of you that had read the research done on our company, both from investment banks in Hong Kong and in London, you can see at 48,000 tons, this is an incredibly profitable business with EBITDA margins of over 60%. So with this, I conclude uh, the presentation of our 2023 results, and I would be happy to answer questions uh, from the investors present at this call. Okay, Oliver Hassler, uh, CEO and Chairman at PIX Resources. Thank you very much for the final results investor presentation. Uh, it was terrific. Um, we've got some questions from investors uh, to put to you. Is that okay, Oliver? Sure, go ahead. Great. Okay. So let's start with what milestones do you expect to hit in 2024? We expect 2024 to be a continuation of what we have shown uh, up to today. We should find a strong increase of production volume. So in Zircon, Rutal, and Ilmenite, a strong increase in sales with an increased EBITDA, especially resulting also from the sales of the new product. Now that we have the Ilmenite export license and are awaiting the one for Rutal, we will be able to sell. Like today, we have an inventory 10,000 tons with all the costs we're absorbed within the Zircon production. So that will generate cash. We're also looking to sell our monocyte, which is the magnetic Zircon that contains rare earth. So we have different access of growth we haven't had until now, which will add uh, cash. As I mentioned during the presentation, I expect us to see a reduction, drastic reduction uh, in costs. So we will continue to what we have been doing, building solid fundamentals, growing our volumes and diversifying our product space that will uh, show a, a, a strong add on to the bottom line and with that add cash so long we have been debt free and intent to stay that way so where do you stand on the pix resources long-term plan that's the, that's the second question uh, we produced almost twelve thousand tons last year our goal is to reach forty-eight thousand ton and with that to become a major player so the next step is probably to 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 produce an excess of eighteen thousand tons Okay, the pick share price is relatively low. Uh, what are your expectations for the, uh, the share price moving forwards? You know, that's not the job of the chairman to speculate on the share price. That's the market. We work very hard on fixing our fundamentals. 
But if you follow what the researchers uh, have shown, we have a relatively low share price together with all the mineral sands companies, which reflects only the, uh, the crisis in the actual world markets. But what the research shows is that we have a huge growth potential compared to fair value prices of our, our, of our shares. Fair value represents the value of today, our company today, and not our company projected. So if we look at what the research have done, they have an average, they're showing an average share price of £1.39, and we're around 15p. So there's a huge potential. So I'm confident that we have a very strong plan. We're showing year-on-year -year improvement of results. But I think it's a great opportunity for investors that want to join us on the long term. Okay, another question. Um, is there compressing in... in European and Western markets was soft in 2023. Where do you see Zircon pricing going in 2024? Depends on the results of the economy. I've always been very bullish on it. So all the projections shows that there will be an increase of demand, but there will be not more supply. Uh, today we're in March. January already showed an increase of demand mainly out of China, which has pushed prices slightly up. So I see a continued pressure on pricing having to increase as demand grows. Uh, China is your biggest market. Uh, the Chinese economy is slowing down. Uh, will this impact uh, PIX resources? I don't think so. I mean, even at 48,000 tons, we're still a very small part of the global demand of China. We have diversified our customer base and we know uh, the customers very well. Customers understand that there will be a lack of supply in the future, so they want to make sure to, to deal with all the different sources of supply, including pigs. So I'm not worried about the sales of our, project, uh, of our products going forward. Okay, that was our final question uh, from investors, Oliver. Uh, can we throw to you for some final remarks, perhaps? So thank you very much. I, first, I want to thank you for your ongoing support, following on the company on, on this very positive path that we have been following together since 2020. And I remain very, very uh, positive that we will continue delivering this report, this type of results going forward. Thank you very much indeed to CEO and Chairman of Pixel Resources, Oliver Hassler. Thank you.